Here it is. Our brand new GeForce RTX 50 series Blackwell architecture. The GPU is just a beast. With the Blackwell family RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. $549 and here's the whole family. Starting from 5070 all the way up to 5090. 5090, twice the performance of a 4090. No, the RTX 5070 isn't as powerful as the previous flagship, the RTX 4090. They're not in the same league, not even close. After a few seconds of pause, Jensen even acknowledged this, saying, Impossible without artificial intelligence. Impossible without the four tops, four teraops of AI tensor cores. Impossible without the G7 memories. So, can the RTX 5070 keep up with the RTX 4090 with AI? Can it offer the same level of performance with multi-frame generation, aka not real frames? That's what we're going to find out in this review. I have here the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 Solid Graphics Card. This model is not an overclocked model and features a compact, small form factor. It's a true two-slot graphics card, measuring 12 inches in length, 4.6 inches in width, and 1.6 inches in thickness. Zotac's RTX 5070 Solid shares the same core configuration as NVIDIA's RTX 5070 Founders Edition. It comes with a boost clock speed of 2,512 megahertz out of the box and uses the newer 16-pin 12 volts 2x6 power connector. For display outputs, it includes three ultra-high bitrate 20 DisplayPort, 2.1B ports, and one HDMI 2.1B port, supporting 4K at 120 hertz or 8K at 60 hertz. Zotac uses its Ice Storm 2.0 cooling system with three blade link fans. The front cooler shroud is made of plastic and features subtle textures, linear patterns, and diagonal grooves that give it a modern industrial look. Only the Zotac logo on the front side includes RGB lighting. Zotac also added an LED indicator to confirm whether the power connector is fully and properly seated. However, the LED can be somewhat difficult to see directly as it's partially covered by the backplate. Now let's see how this graphics card performs. I tested Zotac's RTX 5070 Solid with an X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 9900X. The system also included a 64 gigabyte memory kit running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. Here are the rest of the specifications of the test system used. Let's start with some frame generation tests and see if it can keep up with an RTX 4090. In Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 5070 is noticeably slower than the RTX 4090 when comparing raw performance alone. It's clear that this GPU can't match the previous flagship's power. However, when Frame Generation 2X mode is enabled, the RTX 5070 can outperform the RTX 4090's native performance, though with generated frames and not real frames. The RTX 4090 is limited to Frame Generation 2X only and does not support multi-frame generation. 3x and 4x modes, while enabling frame generation on the RTX 4090 gives it an edge over the RTX 5070's standard frame gen, activating the RTX 5070's multi-frame gen 4x mode allows it to surpass the RTX 4090's frame gen. In the Witcher 3 benchmark, at both 1080p and 1440p, the RTX 4090 appears to be CPU bottleneck, resulting in performance similar to that of the RTX 5070. Keep in mind, raw performance is not the same as frame generation. In Frame Gen 2X mode, for every real frame rendered by the GPU, an AI-generated frame is inserted in between. In Frame Gen 4X mode, for every single real frame, the GPU generates three AI frames inserted between the real frames. Comparing frame generation to native frame rates is not a one-to-one -one comparison, but NVIDIA tends to present them as if they are equivalent. Now that we know the RTX 5070 isn't on par with an RTX 4090, even with the help of AI, let's see some benchmarks without frame generation. At 1080p, the RTX 5070 edges out the 4070 Ti and occasionally leapfrogs heavyweights like the 4080 Super and even the 4090. Impressive? Not really, since it's mostly thanks to CPU bottlenecks. It's like bringing a Ferrari to a go-kart track overkill with nowhere to stretch its legs. That's why high-end GPUs at 1080p often end up waiting on the CPU, 
even if it's a beast like AMD's X3D series. Bumping things up to 2560 by 1440, the RTX 5070 lands about 16% behind its TI counterpart and trails the 7900 XTX by around 12%. Still, it claws back some ground by edging out the 4070 Ti by roughly 4%. It's not the top dog at 1440p, but it's certainly no underdog either. Now for the generational lead, the RTX 5070 is about 27% faster than the RTX 4070 and leaves the RTX 3070 in the dust with a 60% performance boost. If you're upgrading from a 3070 or anything older, the 5070 might just be your ticket to buttery smooth 1440p gaming. No DLSS magic tricks required. Well, except if the game is really graphics intensive. 4K is not the target resolution for the RTX 5070, but it can still handle some games at 4K. Depending on the game and how demanding it is, you might need to dial down settings or call in the reinforcements with DLSS 4, upscaling or frame generation, to keep things smooth and stutter-free. In raw numbers, the RTX 5070 is about 21% slower than the 5070 Ti and roughly 18% behind both the RTX 4080 Super and AMD's Radeon 7900 XTX. On the bright side, it edges out the 4070 Ti by around 3%, which is small enough to fall under margin of error territory. So at 4K, it performs just like a 4070 Ti, only with a slightly newer badge. Additionally, the RTX 5070 is about 29% faster than the RTX 4070 and leaves the RTX 3070 in the rear view with a 60% performance jump at 4K. All in all, based on my results, the RTX 5070 is basically a 4070 Ti with a slight energy drink boost. Excellent for 1440p gaming, but not powerful enough for a smooth 4K gaming experience, unless you're willing to compromise a few settings. Let me discuss more about Zotac's RTX 5070 Solid Card. In terms of power consumption, it drew an average of 218 watts, peaking at 249 watts. Unfortunately, the RTX 5070 isn't more power efficient than its predecessors. In fact, it consumes more power. My RTX 4070 drew an average of 190 watts, with a peak of around 216 watts, clearly lower than the 5070's consumption. In terms of temperature, despite being a two-slot graphics card, the Zotac RTX 5070 never exceeded 70 degrees Celsius during testing. Its peak temperature reached 67 degrees Celsius, with an average gaming temperature of 62 degrees Celsius only. Even though Zotac lists a boost clock of 2,512 MHz, the RTX 5070 Solid reached 2,880 MHz during testing. Many users may forget or may not be aware that NVIDIA GPUs feature GPU boost technology. This allows the GPU to boost higher and or longer provided temperatures stay within safe limits. Unfortunately, I do not have a Radeon RX 9070 card, and I think it is the direct competitor of the RTX 5070 in terms of pricing and performance. Overall, the RTX 5070 delivers raw performance that's right on par with the RTX 4070 Ti, but it falls short of the 4070 Ti Super. This means that if you're thinking of dropping $600 or more on a brand new 4070 Ti, I'll stop you right there. The RTX 5070 gives you nearly the same performance for that price, plus added new features. No one should buy a new 4070 Ti for around $600. Now, let's address NVIDIA's claims. No, the RTX 5070 doesn't offer RTX 4090 level performance, despite what some marketing may imply. Frame generation can inflate the numbers, but it's not the same as true raw power. The visuals may look silky smooth with frame generation, but there's a catch, input lag and visual anomaly. It's not a deal breaker for everyone, but once you notice it, it's hard not to notice it. Smooth frames, slightly sluggish feels, with a dash of some visual anomaly. At the end of the day, the Zotac RTX 5070 is a solid choice for 1440p gaming, pun fully intended. It also delivers excellent performance at 1080p, but begins to struggle at 4K, partly due to the limitation of having only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. That's it for today. I'll be back with more GPU reviews and head-to-head -head comparisons soon, so stay tuned for more content. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with fellow gamers, and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you for watching.